Hey yo friends and welcome to this channel and today's video all about the essential world of reference counting in Rust. Now by the end of this video you're going to understand what reference counting even is, when you should use it and why you should use it. For that we're going to look at two explicit examples in Rust. So without further ado, let's quickly jump to the fun stuff. Now first off this video was based on a question that was posted in the comments down below. So thank you for that. And the question mainly was how you can basically define multiple event listeners that can manipulate or mutate the same variable without getting a lot of errors in Rust. And both examples in this video we are going to look at are basically taking multiple ownerships of one single variable. So let's take a quick look here. So this code is based on our last video and if you haven't checked out the last video, make sure to check it out to really understand what the move keyword is and what this whole code even means. Reference counting is basically a memory management concept or technique that you can use specifically in Rust for enabling shared ownership of data that you use throughout your whole application. So let's just get quickly into the code and implement a reference counting technique. So we have here our mutatable vector and obviously our first closure. Now the use case is that we want to have two closures that manipulate or mutate the same variable. For that, we are just going to copy our closure here and paste it down below and call this inner two. And then obviously we maybe also want to use the vector outside of both closures. So if we save this right now, we get a bunch of errors because we have ownership of basically the vector, the mutatable vector in this first closure. However, we cannot take ownership of this mutatable vector in the second closure. And obviously we cannot reuse it outside of the closures. So basically in our main program. Now let's take a closer look at one example that does not work. Now your first guess might be to resolve this issue to just clone the mutatable vector and then reuse it in the closure. But you will see that this does not work. So let's take a quick look at this specific non-working example. So for that, we're going to create a new scope inside of our closure. Now in this separate scope of our closures, we can specifically rebind our variables. For that, we can simply say let v is equal to v.cloned. Now obviously this has to be mutatable because obviously we want to push an element to our vector. And as you can see here, this error of our first closure is now resolved. So let's do this quickly for our second closure as well. And we define here basically another mutatable vector and we clone it directly from our original mutatable vector that is actually based in our main program. Now if we save everything, we see that it actually does not print any error. And that's pretty good, right? That's always progress in Rust. Now if we run the project now, we basically see an issue with our cloning. And you can actually see that all our vectors basically have the same state and the same data. And there's no four or fifth element in this specific vector. And that's actually problematic. Now the issue with that is pretty simple to explain. So we have our vector that is like based in our main program. Then we define a closure. And in this closure, we have a separate scope that is completely independent of the main program scope. In here, we basically clone the reference, which basically means that we have one memory slot or one memory address for our main program vector. And then we have another separate, completely independent memory slot for our closure scope. And that's why it actually doesn't work. Now obviously mutating this vector in our closure scope does work. And if we now print like for instance, this vector that we defined actually here, we actually see a fourth element, but obviously it does not work with like the other closure. So we cannot basically have the same data in a second closure. And that's where reference counting come really in place and come really handy. So for that, we're going to first look at a non-thread safe example. This is really important to know. So for instance, if you have a multi-threaded application, this example will not work, but I will present you a second example where a thread safe application is actually provided. So here I need to first of all explain the RC, which basically stands for reference counting. Now this is a natively implemented type in Rust, and basically you can imagine it as like some sort of container. 
and we can put items inside of this container. Now this container keeps track of how many times it is being used throughout the application. And when it is empty, it is basically dropped from the memory or removed. And that's basically the idea of RC, which basically is reference counting, right? Because we count the references, the items in the container, and whenever the items are gone from the container, basically the RC will clear itself out. However, we also need something like a reft cell. Now a reft cell is basically a runtime check borrowing mechanism. And this is like a concept of interior mutability. Now this sounds pretty scary, but don't worry, it will make sense after this example. Basically ref cell allows the data to be mutatable even when it holds non-mutable references. So let's implement it here in our example. So first off, we're going to define our container which holds our items. For that, we're going to use RC and then new. Now, obviously RC is not defined, so we need to import this from this standard library. And then we're going to use ref cell, which we are going to import as well. Now we have basically a container that holds an item that can be mutated throughout our application. Now we have our vdoc clone here, which basically says the RC that we want to clone and that it should count this reference. So it should respect this specific reference here. And in this move closure, we are going to actually do something a little bit different. So we're going to say replace with, which basically allows us to replace the old value with something or mutate the old value. For that, we're going to explicitly define another closure. And then we have an argument for our closure, which is old in this case. So it contains the old data of our vector that we actually used in our container here. So we're basically now kind of copying our item from the container. So in here, we're going to push the element four to it, and then we're going to return a cloned version of the old vector. Now, if we save this, this actually works perfectly now, right? There are no errors. There are no compiler errors in our first closure. So let's just do the same thing for our second closure. So first we're going to clone the original vector and say RC, okay, please count this specific reference. Then we're going to define the closure and then we're going to use replace with, with another closure that takes in the old argument or the old vector as an argument. And here we're going to push the element five into the vector and then we're going to return the cloned version of the old vector. And there we go, we basically see now no further issues with this application. And by the way, I overwrote the first element here as a two, so let's change that back to a one. So if we run this now, we actually see the expected output. So the first inner closure has the values one, two, three. In this inner closure, we push then the element four. So in our second closure, we now have four elements. And then in the second closure, we basically push our fifth element so that in the outer printing, basically, in our main application, we have all our five elements in the vector. So let's quickly reiterate here what we actually have done. So we basically have an RC, which stands for reference counting, which is basically some sort of container that holds items. In this container, we have a ref cell, which basically defines our kind of item in the container that can be mutated in our application. And then we basically make use of the cloning, which basically is the same as, for instance, RC, clone, and then V. So this basically here, the RC clone, is the same as the cloning we actually used um, before that. So it's basically the same thing. However, we are saying now with this cloning that this container should keep track of this specific reference. So now it actually counts this reference and then it's going to clear itself up after this closure is actually executed and after this variable so the container is not used anymore, it's going to clean up the whole container itself. So in this closure then we printed basically something and then we use the replace with functionality, which takes in the closure where the argument is the old vector we actually defined here in the beginning and in this closure, we're going to push the element four to this vector. And then we're going to return the cloned version of this old vector, which now contains the new element. And we basically do the same thing with our second closure. 
So like I said, this is a non-thread safe example. So if you have a multi-threaded application, this will not work. So let's take a quick look at the second example. Now the second example makes use of the arc and the mutex basically. And this is obviously a thread safe example. However, it will take a little bit more overhead for the compiler itself. So for that, we're going to replace RC with arc. Now we can remove the imports here and then basically re-import our arc usage. And we are going to replace RefCell with mutex. Now arc basically stands for atomic reference counter. So it's the same thing like the reference counter itself. However, it is atomic. That basically means that it's kind of thread safe. A mutex is a mutually exclusive flag. And basically you can think of the mutex as like a gatekeeper that basically only allows one single thread in and blocks the others basically. Now again, let v v clone is the same thing as let v is equal to arc clone. And then we're going to define our arc in here. This is basically the same thing again, like in our RC example. But now we are not going to make use of the replace with functionality, but first we're going to lock this thing up. And lock basically locks now the mutex. So we basically now say the mutex that this specific closure wants to manipulate or do something with this data. So it blocks all of the other threads basically or in this instance, all of the other closures. Now in here, we're going to unwrap. So we basically don't care about the error for now. And then we're going to push the element four to our vector. And this basically works. Now we're going to do the same thing for our second closure. So we lock the mutex, we don't care about the error, and then we push the element five to our vector. And this is basically also a working example, but it is now a thread safe. However, it's a bit less performant than the simple RC. Now, if we run this example, you can actually see that it works perfectly and there are no issues or compile runtime issues. So let's quickly reiterate over this example. So we have our arc here, which is some sort of container, but this time it is actually thread safe. Then we have a mutex, which is like a mutually exclusive flag which basically handles the incoming data that only one single thread or one single closure in this case can deal with this data and we block basically all the other threads. And in this mutex, we define our initial data here. Now in both of our closures, we're going to clone the data. So we again here count the reference to our arc, to our container. And then we define the closure. In this closure, we're going to print something. Then we're going to lock the mutex. We don't care about the error again. Locking basically means here that we now say, okay, this closure is manipulating the data. So the mutex will block all the other closures. We don't care about the error again. And then we just push the new data to our vector. And this was basically it. You can now hopefully say that you understand reference counting in Rust and hopefully you're going to apply RC or ARC in your next project. I hope that video helped you to understand all the fun stuff in Rust. So basically the smart pointers that we used here in our application. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day. Bye bye.